So today we're talking about the Canon control software. First off, we're going to talk about just general workflow. Um, on the exam tab, this is where we're registering our patients. Generally, you're going to be working off of a work list. This is where we would find our patients in this list. And we can, of course, filter those down uh, to new exams, pending or suspended exams, and restarted exams. Um, if we don't have a work list functioning, we can always manually register our patients in here. Okay. Next tab over is going to be your pass list. Pass list is anything that's been completed, right? So whether they've been delivered to PACS or not, uh, this is where you're going to find them. And the same rules apply. We can still filter that down by name, ID, or a session number, or study date, okay? Um, so we have one here, some test images that we shot. Just go ahead and restart this exam so we can see what that looks like. Right, so here's a pelvis shot on a pelvis phantom we took. Um, and there's a little bit better shot with a better dose. First things first, we want to look at uh, some of our overlays. We can customize this any way you want, but I've got patient name, um, ID, and birth date up here. Uh, if we have an integrated system, I would have uh, your dose, your actual technical factors up in the top right corner, bottom left, anything you want, a session number, date, time, uh, all kinds of stuff. These are just overlays we can turn off or on. Uh, most importantly though is your bottom numbers. We've got your EI, your EI target, and your deviation index. Those are going to be those uh, exposure indicators that help you uh, figure out what dose you want to use. All right, all the tools that you're going to be using uh, are pretty much on the right hand side of your screen in the toolbar here. Um, depending on the size of your monitor, you may have one or two toolbars. Obviously, we've got some rotation tools. We can do a 90 degrees right and left. Uh, on the newest version software, we do have free rotation. So if I click on that, we can get in here and literally grab and drag and move that image around to whatever we want. Okay, Or we can use our small adjustments over here. Flip vertical or horizontal are both available. Invert, black to white, white to black. And these are just on off buttons. Left marker, throw that on there, right marker. Okay. If you don't want those, again, just on off buttons. Just turn them off. Your cropping button is next. If we get into here, you'll notice there's a lot of tools. Really what you need to know is you can just drag and bring those circles in to bring your lines in. And of course cropping is going to you know, cut off the parts of the image that you don't want to send, right? We can reset that a number of different ways up here. You can go all the way out to the irradiated field that it found, all the way out to the full size of the panel, or just reset it to what it uh, originally came up as. Next tool is going to be your masking tool. Masking is going to uh, allow you to black out parts of the image without cutting anything. So I have that masking turned on. Um, I've got three tools. I can use a square tool, a circle tool, or a polygonal tool. And that polygonal tool is the one we use mostly. Um, that way I can just set points. I can maybe cut around a certain portion of that image. Black only at that corner out. Just finish where I started in that circle up there. And now, when I hit OK, that corner will be blacked out, okay, and I can put marker over the top of it, it's still going to send. So the masking is going to help uh, primarily when you don't want to uh, magnify your image with cropping, we can use masking, um, achieve the same results without the uh, added magnification. ROI stands for region of interest, it's our next button here. Um, on the Canon software, all you're going to have to do is select two points. So maybe right there, and let's say right there. And wherever I set those points, it will reprocess the image. It's going to window level it, change the brightness for you, um, specifically to look at this region of interest. And I can just keep making new boxes until I like the way that image looks. Right? This is particularly helpful when I'm looking at spinal stuff. I can really hone in on... Uh, the vertebral column, when I maybe didn't collimate very well, um, definitely a nice tool to use. 
just hit OK if you like it, cancel if you don't. On our next set of tools here, obviously we have some magnification buttons. This will get real tight, it will get to a one to one ratio and then we can really move around. If I use my panning tool over here, I can move that around. Um, really nice when you get into full screen mode. Uh, you can, on the portable you've got a 19 by 19 inch monitor. So really nice in the ER and the OR, those doctors can really hone in, zoom in I should say, on, uh, on what they're looking at there. And of course we can zoom out one step at a time or just simply hit fit to get it back to the normal size. Either way it's not going to send blown up, it's just for critiquing. So your zoom tools are all in one section. Next tool is going to be a copy tool. So if I copy this image, it's just going to add another pelvis AP over here into my protocols. It has a little copy symbol on it so that you know it's a copy. Um, maybe we want to send this pelvis, maybe we did some sort of a abdominal line placement or tube placement. Um, this is where I would use that advanced edge enhancement tool, which is right below copy. And it's going to give you a little sharper image, a little higher contrast image. Um, particularly good on chests and abdomens. That's what we really are using that on. But it's really good for any foreign body, right? So and it's just an on-off tool. But in this case, I would send, of course, the original along with the edge enhanced image. Um, send it two ways and maybe mark it so the doctor knows what's what. Um, kind of up to your radiologist to decide whether they like that or not. Next tools, uh, we've got undo and reset. Right? Undo is going to allow us to um, go back one step at a time, up to five steps. Otherwise, you would need to hit reset to take that big image back to the original processed image. And then, of course, reject. If I reject an image, we can uh, select a reason. I can shut that off if you don't want it, but uh, select a reason, OK. That'll be uh, baked into the retake analysis uh, that you can pull off of the machine. It's going to put a red X over the top of that protocol, so it's not going to send to PAX at this point. Okay. Uh, if I want to get that back, reject, you'll notice, turns into restore. So I can just restore that image. I've got it back. I can send it to PAX. All right. So those are the basic tools you're going to have on here. Um, as far as workflow on the Canon system, um, couple of highlights to point out. Uh, with Canon, what's going to happen is, and we're, we're not connected to a detector here, but you'll see that you've got an orange highlighted protocol. That just means that that's the protocol I'm looking at. If it were highlighted green, like a neon green color, okay, that's going to mean that that's the image, or excuse me, the protocol that I'm ready to shoot. Um, so what that means uh, to the end user is that if you've got two people working on the same exam, uh, one can be annotating um, and editing that previous exposure while the other one is completely ready to go. Technique is pulled up. They don't need to um, come back in here and uh, s select a new protocol to shoot or have to worry about this. Um, as you shoot these images, they're going to roll down to the next unexposed thumbnail. So really good workflow with the Canon software. If, for some reason, um, you've shot these um, and need to reprocess them, so maybe, maybe we're saying that this shot is actually a, uh, a hip instead of a pelvis. If I click on the middle of that protocol, I can simply go into my menus, to my pelvis hip section, and we're going to call it a hip. It's going to give me a little before and after up here. Hit OK. It's going to reprocess that now as a hip. Let's turn that. Not going to be a big difference between a hip and a pelvis in terms of processing, um, but it's going to also rename that series description so it comes over to PAX correctly. Okay. Um, let's say we um, you know, need to uh, move it within the study. So if I've got uh, additional images, um, I've just added an additional exposure to this uh, study. Um, one more feature on uh, the Canon software you can see this little plus sign in the thumbnail. If at the beginning of your exam you realize I'm going to need um, to have another hip AP for whatever reason, I can simply click on that thumbnail, 
add another one from the jump, okay? Post exposure, if I needed another hip AP, I've already made that image, we do have a repeat button down here. You'll see that it's grayed out because I'm not actually in an exam. This is a fake patient, but uh, you could hit repeat. It's going to add another hip AP into this study. Okay. If we have multiple studies, you'll also notice um, you'll have the ability to separate those studies by header. Right. So this would be one study, and we could have multiple studies stacked up in here. Um, and keep them separated with a study description so that you know what study you're in. Let's say we're doing a right and a left hand at the same time. You kind of want to know which study you're in so that we're sending the left on the left and the right on the right. If I needed to, I can also drag and drop these thumbnail images from one thumbnail to a blank thumbnail, pretty simply. Um, that can also happen between two different studies. So if I've shot these completely out of order, um, I can very simply move those. Workspace sort, if I'm, if I'm doing a bunch of things, uh, only tabletop, and then a bunch on the table, and then a bunch on the wall, I can um, sort by what workspace I'm using, okay? Do all the tabletop together, all the table together, all the wall together. Or we can keep it on study sort. Unselect, it's just going to take, take us out of a ready status, right? So we're not burning juice on the battery. Edit exam is simply where I'm going to add more views into my study. All right, select one, hit OK. All right. Image processing down here, right? Well, we'll give you uh, the ability to adjust your brightness and contrast. Um, these are m minor adjustments, and for the most part, I would uh, tell you that using the ROI feature over here that we discussed earlier is your best option. Um, you start messing with contrast and you can mess with the radiologist latitude. So ROI is the best tool to use. Measurements, uh, if any of the doctors want to, they can come in here and, and use the measurement tool. Um, we can calibrate it from here, use a Cobb angle. Um, lots of different stuff in here if you so choose to use it. And then of course annotations, I'm going to have a number of annotations already built in to this. Um, so with that annotation section. All we've got to do is select what's in here, grab it, drop it where you want it. As long as it's highlighted like that, we can enlarge it, reduce it, or delete it. And there is a section to add edit, and we can free text in whatever we want, place it right there. Okay. So that's your annotations, and of course your super users will be able to go in and edit those and add multiple pages and reorganize them however they want. So when you're done with your images, um, done taking exposures, we're just going to hit end exam to complete it and send it off to PAX. But you do also have the option to just send to storage and not end the study. So you can kind of send it one at a time if you'd like. Or we can suspend the exam if necessary. So if we need to come back to that at another time. So we'll do that now. Suspend that study. A few other quick notes in here. Uh, if we do suspend a study, we will have the ability to rebind those images. Now, we're not connected to a work list as this is just a demo unit. Um, but if we suspend a study, you'll have a button right up here near the edit where we can rebind the images. And what that means is we can move images uh, from order to order. So if we've shot on the wrong patient, or maybe it's the right patient, wrong order, wrong study. Um, as long as you suspend it before you send it, we can, uh, we can rebind those images really easily. Okay. Um, down here at the bottom, you'll also see that we do have an emergency button. So if you are in that trauma scenario, um, hit the emergency button, grab whatever it is you're going to shoot, start the exam. What's going to happen is it's going to put your date and time into the ID field. So that when you send this off to PAX, right, you can um, identify that in PAX, edit that information, or bind it with, uh, merge it with the appropriate order. Now, if you do decide to, you can also suspend the exam, okay, and use that same rebinding button that you'll find right up here uh, later. Okay, so we can rebind those images by selecting that rebind button, selecting the correct order. And, uh, and saving it into the correct order. 
Next section I want to talk about is your PC tool. Um, this currently is going to give you every single thing in here. We're not going to go over everything. That's something that we'll get into with super users when we do an install. Um, but just know that you do have the ability to come into, let's say, annotations, uh, change what your overlays are, change what you're burning in to the image to send to packs. We have a lot of options in here. This is also where I'm going to come into my free annotation and laterality marker, change uh, that list of annotations, change my left and right markers. Do I want a different font, a different size? Okay. Um, We'll give all users access to the connection tab uh, that allows you to switch which destination you're going to send to. So if you have a secondary or a downtime PAX location, we can switch to that um, if that's going to happen for uh, an extended period of time and we'll just automatically send there. Log viewer up at the top is just going to talk about every error that's ever occurred on the system. Real helpful when you're calling us uh, for service questions or applications questions, we can identify what issue you're having. Process Viewer is going to be your PAX queue. So everything that you've tried to send to PAX will come in here and it'll drop off the list as it successfully goes. Looks like we've got a, a test patient that errored out. I'm glad I have that in there. This is a teaching tool. Um, if you see one like this, real simple to highlight it, hit retry. So if something fails to go to PAX, Real simple to come into the process viewer, grab it, retry it. Okay. QC tool is where I'm going to do my um, annual calibration. There are some performance tests and self-diagnosis. That's good for your state regulatory bodies if they're wanting uh, you to complete something quarterly or monthly. Um, we can give you instructions on what to do here and, and log it so that the state is happy. Database backup, okay, this is where I'm going to pull my retake analysis. So this output exam log section, I can just drop it into a USB drive, select a start and end date, execute, and uh, that'll be a nice spreadsheet for you to work off of for your reject log. Protocol editor is going to talk about all of your different protocols, right? And this is where I can go in and uh, reorganize these however you want to, um, but by all means, we would encourage you to give us a call if you have any questions on this stuff. Um, it's also where I can change my procedure mapping. So I can come in here and say for, for all my ribs orders, I want certain views over here. I can add them, delete them, reorganize them however I want. Okay. So this is again will be some more super user stuff, but it's, it's helpful, helpful to know. Um, again, we encourage you to give us a call if you have any questions. Image processing, really more for uh, your application specialist to get into. Um, but we can actually play with image processing is where we can go in, edit the radiography parameters, the processing parameters of those views. Okay. And of course, logout, we do have the ability to have separate user logins uh, on this system so that we can track your reject rate. Uh, by different user and of course shut down is where we're going to shut the system down.